We are here to look back at a time in Rice's history when our campus was not like the robust, diverse student body we see today. As we begin our year-long celebration of 50 years since the desegregation of this university, we must stop to reflect on how our university became the inclusive community we see today. The saying goes, change is inevitable, but progress is optional. As a university, Rice changed along with our nation and educational system. For us, it was in 1963 and 64 when the university went to court to change its charter to allow black students at Rice. In doing so, the campus opened its small community within the hedges to welcome Raymond Johnson in 1964. Dr. Johnson, who is here tonight as we know, would tell you that his experience as a graduate student did not require the intense involvement and interaction with the student body like our first undergraduate students. Dr. Johnson paved the way so that in 1965, Jacqueline McCauley and Charles Freeman could come to campus as undergraduates, forever changing the Rice student body. Actually, one of the, one of the things that I came across in the, in the math department files really goes to the heart of this. It's a letter from Raymond Johnson uh, to President Pitzer. He doesn't ask for anything for himself, right? But who he asks, what he asks for very politely is that someone do something to help these two students who were coming in this environment that was not prepared for them. And Pitzer wrote him back. I can't remember exactly what the, the note said, it was, but it was very polite, very nice. But he was frankly befuddled at the notion that you would do anything to retain a student, right? That idea also did not exist here. And it wasn't just black students, right? The entire student services regime that we live under now was non-existent. It is a remarkable group of alumni and a remarkable group of students and a university that has changed rather dramatically from those first students who completed in that, that year in 19... 66, and now approximately 300 African-American students in our student body today. That is a transformation from an environment in which you could rather easily count the minorities of whatever kind or origin in our student body to a campus on which there is, in fact, no majority in our student body. To recall that we have been accepting black students at Rice for 50 years and that so many of them have done so well uh, in their careers and their contributions to the world and that obviously many of our African American students feel a real connection to Rice, which is why so many of you are here tonight and why there's Aruba. When I look out at this audience and see the mixture of people here, uh, I got to tell you, this is a great event for me. When I talk to students, I say, particularly to young white students, you're not responsible for the past. You are responsible for the future. And I say to Rice University, you're not responsible for the past, but you damn sure are responsible for the future. I came here knowing particularly after Charles hadn't been successful, after my high school counselor said, I don't know why you want to go to Rice, because Charles didn't make it, and after all, his parents were professional. She uh, kind of threw down the gauntlet for me, and I realized that I had to be successful, because people were going to judge the people that came after me and, and decide whether they had an opportunity or not based on what I did, and that, that's a very difficult burden for a young person, but I really wouldn't change it because it, it gave a whole perspective to my life because I was given much, and so, of course, a lot should be expected. It was a strange time. Uh, Melissa talked about the fact that Rice was a throw you in the deep end and just see how you're going to do, and if you drown, then that's not their problem kind of place, and I was a Kid from uh, Houston was a big city to me. I had grown up in Amarillo, and this was, I was, golly gee, look at this place. <laughs> and so, um, 
like I think most of my classmates, many of whom are like me, first kid in the family to graduate from college, uh, um, we, tried not to, we tried not to make a big deal out of this. I think when I made the decision to come to Rice, I didn't think, I didn't think in terms of what that meant from a historical standpoint. It was just a great school, it was close to home, the reputation was good. And um, I just thought it was going to, it was all going to work out. I mean, in my naive as a 17-year-old coming to college. But as you start to hear the stories of the first person, Charles Freeman, and the stories about Linda Williams, and you know, Staley Vincent was the first African-American quarterback, and all these firsts, you start to realize that there's something special going on here as far as point in time. The, the greatest experiences were not those that, that where your blackness stood out, but it was those where your blackness melded and you were enjoying just the college experience, okay? That was really, really great. Thank you. <laughs>